This video is brought to you by the Product Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PDM ICE. PDM ICE is a product management office within Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos we have developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this product office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper use and care of the enhanced combat helmet, referred to from here on as the ECH. We will demonstrate the proper procedure for inspecting the ECH for serviceability, installing the night vision goggle mount, the reversible helmet cover, and the suspension system pads. We will also cover donning the ECH, making proper adjustments to the retention system, and the care and cleaning of the ECH. Finally, we will demonstrate how to determine an individual Marine's helmet size. The ECH is a result of an urgent statement of need that called for improved ballistic protection against select small arms ammunition and fragmentation while maintaining the weight of the lightweight helmet. The ECH has been co-developed by the Marine Corps and the Army. The ECH is not a replacement for the current lightweight helmet. The ECH will be issued out of the individual issue facility and the size range will be small through extra large. As with all helmets, a properly sized and properly worn helmet significantly increases its protection capabilities. Let's take a look at your new ECH. The bare helmet itself is called the shell and the outer edge of the shell is covered by what we call the edge trim. The components of the ECH are the X-back retention system, a set of seven suspension system pads which must be installed at all times, an NVG mounting bracket assembly, a reversible helmet cover with a hole pre-cut for the NVG bracket, an optional ballistic protection nate pad. Finally, your ECH will come with a quick reference guide which will cover information covered in this video as well as additional information not covered in this video. We'll now demonstrate the procedures for inspecting the ECH for serviceability. You should conduct this inspection when first receiving an ECH and periodically during use. On the helmet shell, examine for dents, cuts, delaminating or chipped paint. Next, check the shell's edge trim for any loose or missing material. Inspect for damage or loose hook disc. Discs that will not securely hold the pads in place will require the wearer to turn the helmet in for a replacement. Check the retention system for torn or frayed webbing, broken nape strap buckles, damaged D-rings, or missing or loose attaching hardware. Check the trench strap for broken buckles, torn, cut, or frayed webbing, and worn or frayed hook and loop fasteners. Any of these problems render the ECH unserviceable. Finally, inspect the pads for cuts, tears, or other damage to outer fabric, deteriorated inner foam, and pads that don't adhere to the hook discs. If any of these problems exist, replace the appropriate pads. Regardless of the inspection results, pads should be replaced after six months of continuous use. Before we install the suspension system pads, we must install the night vision goggle bracket and the newly designed reversible helmet cover. The MVG bracket for the ECH is slightly different than the mount for the lightweight helmet. The ECH bracket will have an E etched into it. Because the thickness of the shell varies by size, we have two different size screws. For a small and medium helmet, the head of the shorter screw and the nut will be green. For a large and extra large helmet, the head of the longer screw and the nut will be tanned. Place the bracket assembly over the edge trim on the helmet. Line up the slot on the bracket with the hole in the helmet shell. Next, insert the nut into the recessed area of the bracket. You must align the flat sides of the nut so that it sits flush in the recessed area of the bracket. Ensuring the slot on the bracket, the nut, and the hole in the helmet are all lined up, place a finger over the nut to keep it in place and insert the screw from the inside of the helmet and start turning the screw. Keeping pressure on the bottom of the bracket so the cleat remains tight against the edge of the helmet, Tighten the hardware using a flathead screwdriver, however do not over tighten. You are now ready to install the newly designed reversible helmet cover.
The new design allows you to change from one camouflage pattern to the other without having to remove the NVG mount. Start by passing the NVG mount through the pre-cut hole in the cover. Continue to install the helmet cover until all hook and loop straps are securely in place. We are now ready to install the suspension system pads. The suspension pads are designed to absorb energy in order to reduce head injury risk from blunt impacts. The crown pad sits securely in the center of the helmet. The two trapezoidal pads are placed at the front and at the back of the helmet, flush with the inside of the edge trim. The hardware inside the helmet where the retention system attaches to the helmet in four places must be covered by all four oval pads. As with the two trapezoidal pads, the four oval pads must be flush with the inside of the edge trim. The oval and trapezoidal pads may be placed in either a vertical or horizontal configuration or at any angle in between. The vertical configuration maximizes airflow for better temperature regulation. The horizontal configuration makes a seal around the user's head and is better suited for cold weather environments. However, regardless of the angle, you must ensure that all hardware is covered and that the pads are flush with the inside of the edge trim. It must be emphasized and clearly understood that using fewer than the seven issued pads is not authorized. We will now demonstrate the proper procedure for donning the helmet and making adjustments to the X-back retention system. When donning the helmet for the first time in a cold environment, it is necessary to wear the helmet for a few minutes or otherwise warm the pads, such as by placing them in your pockets, so that the pads will conform to the shape of your head. As the pads warm up and conform to the shape of your head, it may be necessary to retighten the chin and retention straps. Your ECH should be adjusted for a snug, secure fit at all times when the helmet is worn. Failure to do so may result in injury. When donning the helmet, adjust the front retention straps to ensure the buckle D-rings are below the earlobes. Then buckle the chin strap. Adjust the nape strap for a snug, secure, comfortable fit. At this point, tighten the chin strap by pulling on the hook ends of the chin strap until the fit is snug, secure, and comfortable. Check the helmet stability by attempting to rock the helmet back and forth on your head. If the helmet rocks, it is not stable. If necessary, adjust the nape strap further until the helmet is stable. A properly fitted helmet will allow the wearer to just see the brim of the helmet, which equates to the brim being one half inch above the eyebrows. The lower edge of the helmet should sit at the top of the ear canal, the D-ring is below the earlobe, and there are no loose straps. If the D-ring covers the earlobes when the nape strap is adjusted, lower the front retention strap buckles until the D-rings are below the earlobe and recheck for stability. If after all adjustments are made and the crown pad does not touch the wearer's head, more than one half inch of the forehead is exposed, the wearer does not see the brim, or if the helmet is simply too tight, obtain a larger helmet. If the helmet sits too low on the brow or is not compatible with eyewear, obtain a smaller helmet. Finally, if the helmet shell and the pad seem to be the right size, but the retention system is too large or too small, obtain a larger or smaller retention system. Refer to the quick reference guide for detailed instructions on how to replace the retention system. We are now ready to discuss how to care for and clean the ECH. Wipe the exterior of the helmet shell with a damp cloth. Clean the hook disc with a soft bristle brush to remove dirt and debris. Hand wash the pads with mild soap and water. Rinse well and allow to air dry. Never machine wash or dry the pads. Clean the retention system with a damp cloth. For the leather components, clean with mild soap, rinse thoroughly, and wipe dry with a clean cloth. If you are using the optional ballistic nape protection pad, wipe it clean with a moistened sponge or cloth. Never machine wash or dry. Though your ECH is extremely durable, do not expose it to an external heat source and do not paint the helmet shell due to degradation of the infrared signature and reduction in flame resistant protection. Do not use it as a hammer, a shovel, a chair, or for any other unintended purpose. We are finally ready to demonstrate the procedure for determining the correct helmet size. Please refer to the quick reference guide for further details if necessary. The first step is to measure and record the wearer's head length. Using a caliper and a ruler, 
Measure the distance from the Clabella landmark to the back of the head. Record the measurement. The next step is to measure and record the wearer's head width. Using a caliper and a ruler, measure the maximum horizontal width of the head just above the ears. Record the measurement. Now using a tape measure, measure the maximum circumference of the head just above the ears. The final step is to compare the head length, head width, and head circumference to the sizing chart found in the quick reference guide. Of the three measurements, select the measurement that corresponds to the largest measurement. For example, if the head length corresponds to a large and the other two measurements correspond to a medium, select a large helmet. Note that the use of both a balaclava and an M40 protective mask adds one quarter inch to the user's head width and five sixteenths of an inch to the user's head length. This may place the user into the next larger helmet size. If this is the case, it is recommended that the larger size be selected. It is imperative that you follow the procedures outlined in this video and the quick reference guide. For more information regarding the ECH or questions regarding any other infantry combat equipment, please contact the program office at pdmice at usmc.mil.